So let me give you some more examples. Okay, so let's say we take a look at number one here. How many moles are in 7.32 times 10 to the 18 atoms of magnesium? All right, so what I'm looking for, I'm going to start with my question mark. What is it that I'm looking for? I'm looking for moles of magnesium. Okay, so that's what I'm starting with. That's what I'm trying to find. And I start with 7.32 times 10 to the 18 atoms of magnesium. Okay, so I'm going from atoms to moles. First thing to do is to put my unit of atoms on the bottom. So atoms of magnesium on the bottom. What I'd like to convert to, I put on the top. So it, here's the trick. What you want to do is whatever you put here, whatever goes here, goes directly down here. Don't even think about it. Just put it directly down here. Then the next thing to think about is what do I want to convert this to? I'd like to convert this to the moles of magnesium. Do I have a connection between atoms and the number of moles? Remember, atoms are types of particles. So if I go back... We can see that one mole is equal to Avogadro's number of particles every time. So we don't have to really think too much about that. We just have to remember that number. So we put on the bottom. This time we're going to put one mole on the top. And we're going to put Avogadro's number on the bottom this time. The reason we put it on the bottom is that Avogadro's number is one mole is Avogadro's number of atoms. Avogadro's number of particles. One mole is equal to this. One mole is equal to this. Just like if I had one dozen i put the 12 on the bottom because I'd have 12 eggs, right? I would have one dozen versus one mole. Same general idea. Just go back to that idea of magnesium. So that's a pretty small amount. Okay, so there's your final answer. A lot of students have trouble calculating this and dividing it. They get a lot of, lot of issues with that. So we'll definitely work on that in class and make sure everybody can, can do this. But if I were you, I'd pause this right now and try to um, get this number on your calculator to make sure you're doing it properly. Don't forget to use EE for the um, times 10 part. So for this times 10, you should be using that E, e button, not times 10. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at the next one. How many molecules of carbon dioxide are in 3.47 moles? So here we are looking for molecules, and we are looking for molecules of CO2. So I'm starting with what I'm looking for, okay, and then I write down what I'm given. So it's 3.47 moles of carbon dioxide. What I do is I put down here at the bottom, moles, of carbon dioxide and on the top I'm gonna to go ahead and put my molecules of carbon dioxide okay so whatever I'm whatever I have down here I put directly down here at the bottom the number one always goes with mole notice what I did here for shortcut I did you know you drop the E <laughs> it is actually a legitimate shortcut for writing the mole um, so MOL is mole MOLEC is molecules so be careful with some of the shortcuts and some of the, the uh, abbreviations we do all right, so 6.02 on the top times 10 to the 23rd because that is what one mole is equal to. One mole equals this many molecules. And you end up with 2.09 times 10 to the 24th uh, molecules of carbon dioxide. Make sure you put the substance as well. What are we talking about? We're talking about molecules of carbon dioxide. So there is my final answer. Okay, again, practice with your calculator. Make sure you can get that answer. And as I told you before, what happens with the units is that this unit cancels and this unit cancels. And it leaves me with molecules of carbon dioxide. These problems aren't so bad because they're all single step problems. What we're going to see later on is multiple step problems where we put a bunch of these conversion factors together. So please practice with these small, simple step ones before we move on to the more advanced ones. Okay, in this problem here, number three, what I'm looking at is calculating the number of moles uh, that are in 1.71 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of calcium chloride. So this time I'm looking for moles of calcium chloride. Okay, so start with looking for moles, and what I'm given is 1.71 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of calcium chloride. And yes, I did just abbreviate formula units with an FU, okay? Uh, FU for formula units. Just a lot, you don't want to write that out any more than you have to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 
Fu on the bottom, formula units, calcium chloride. On the top, I'm going to put my mole, and it would be calcium chloride. So remember, one mole on the top, one goes with the mole, one goes with the mole. Since formula units are types of particles, they're types of ionic compound particles, we're going to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd on the bottom. And then we go ahead and do the calculation. 0.284 moles of calcium chloride. Okay? okay. So again, formula units cancel because they're one above and below each other. Remember, you can think of this as being over one. Here I'm looking for bromide ions. So I want to know how many ions of bromide I have. Okay? All right, so what do I have? I'm looking for those bromide ions in 3.28 moles of barium bromide. So 3.28 moles of barium bromide. Okay? All right, so what I do is I'm going to go ahead and put down my little conversion factor. I'm going to put my unit down at the bottom, which would be moles of barium bromide. Okay? Now, here's I'm going to do something a little different. Now, if you think about this formula, if you think about the formula for barium bromide, if I have one mole of barium bromide, wouldn't you say that in this one mole that I have one mole of barium two plus ions, right? Because the formula, one down here and a two here, wouldn't whatever this amount be would be the same as the barium ions? Right? Because if I had one formula unit of it, wouldn't I have one barium ion? So if I have one mole, I have one barium ion. And I would also have two moles of bromide. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the number down here, and I'm going to use that to create my conversion factor. Bromide on the top. Now if I use this logic down here that I was talking about, I would put one mole of barium bromide, and I would get two moles of bromide ions in that one compound, right? So whatever I have here, I'm going to double the amount of ions because of the two down here at the bottom. So I'm going to continue on with another conversion factor because I don't have the answer that I want because I don't want moles of barium, I'm sorry, moles of the bromide ion. I want the, the ions of bromide ions. So I have to do one more step. I need to go ahead and convert from the bromide ions now to my ions. And ions are a type of particle, and since I have one mole, I'm going to use Avogadro's number, 602 times 10 to the 23rd. And now I have my setup. And what I can do is I can check this before I go any further. My moles of barium bromide cancel, moles of bromide cancel, which leaves me with units of ions of bromide, which is exactly what I'm looking for. In here, you end up with 3.50 times 10 to the 24 ions, oops, not ions, but ions of bromide ions. And there you go. Now this is a tricky one, and I understand that you probably have a lot of questions about this, so we'll definitely look at this in class, and I'll go through a little bit more you know, explanation. Again, I'm expecting you to get this just by watching this little video lesson, just enough to get you some questions started, get you thinking about it, and I will see you in class. Thank you.